you've just bought City Skylines. Now what? Well, first of all, you've made an excellent choice. The possibilities in this game are nearly endless. If you're new here, I'm Diana. Let's get started. The map I'm using is Sandy Beach, and I've named the city after the map, which seems to be based off of the San Francisco area, but you can pick any map you like if you want to follow along. When you first start a new city, on every base game map, you'll be given a highway exit right here. There are numerous philosophies and debates about which city start is the best, but let's keep it simple, shall we? First, you'll need to build one road to unlock the rest of your roads. Then the easiest and arguably the best way to start your city is to use two one-way roads and bring them out into the city. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull these out about here and actually take this one out a little further. And then to get them to go the right way, you just right click and that'll change the directionality here. Next, let's lay out a small grid of two-way streets around these roads using the dirt road to save money as everything in this game has a maintenance cost, which we'll get into later. Using these guidelines creates 10 unit squares, which gives you maximum ability for density and keeps everything close together. There's no need to overbuild right now, so we'll keep it at this. First of all, your citizens will need power and water. So let's start by placing a power plant sort of out of the way of the main city. Right now, the only thing you'll have available to you is either wind or coal. So coal costs a little more per week, but wind requires there to be wind and you need a lot of them. So I'm gonna start with coal. And I'm gonna create a road back here so that it's a little further away from where we want the main city to be. As the city grows, we can move this all around later. And I'm gonna do the same thing with water. I'm gonna make a water tower over here. You'll need to connect everything up with water pipes and power lines. Water pipes belong under the road. You can place them anywhere you want, but why would you do that? This is much more realistic and it enables you to cover all of your zone squares efficiently. You also need to connect your main city up with power lines. One thing we'll need to do is sewage. You'll start with just this water drain pipe in the base game. And the thing with it is, is it creates a lot of water pollution. So you don't want to use any water pumps downstream for it or it'll kill your people. For this, we're gonna connect it up real simple like that. Now here comes the fun part, zoning. The game has four zoning types, residential, commercial, industrial, an office. Residential and commercial come in low and high density, but you'll only have low density to start and you won't get office until a little later on. This demand meter here shows how much demand there is for each type of zone. We're gonna start with some light residential and I'm gonna put it over here. Be sure to connect it up with power lines so that the power will come to the people. As you can see, all of these beautiful buildings are showing up. We still have a lot more demand for residential, so we're gonna keep going, cause we are losing a lot of money. Every time you build new grids, be sure to check your water lines. The zones will grow if there's no water, but they'll complain real fast. Oh, so next we see we need some commercial zones. A good place for commercial is along this main road here. This gives them access to the high traffic quarters coming off the highway and enables them to get goods delivered to them quickly from outside connections or your industrial zones. It's always a good idea to mix some things in so people have places to walk to. Now we have some industrial. Industrial creates a lot of pollution and generally should not be placed next to residential zones. They do create a lot of traffic as well. So we need to take that into account when we're placing them. Another thing to note when placing industrial is you don't want it near your water sources It'll create a lot of pollution, which will kill your city. I'm gonna place my first bit of industrial over here next to the power plant. These uses are complementary as they both generate a lot of pollution and the industrial won't complain being next to the power plant. We do wanna give lots of connections so people can commute to their jobs. One thing you don't wanna do is place industrial directly on this main road. All the truck traffic will back up and it'll cause problems for everything down the highway. It has a good connection to the power line and that should be enough to satisfy the demand in the short term. Yeah. Obviously we are still hemorrhaging money here. 
losing $530 a week. What we want to do is create even more industrial, but it shouldn't be in one place. If you have all of your industrial zones in a single area, what happens is you create traffic bottlenecks in the long run. With commuters and cargo all going to the same place, so a best practice is to spread everything out evenly amongst your city. I would say now is high time to expand a little more. One thing I recommend doing to increase the velocity of the traffic down these main roads is to cut off a few of these connections so there's not as many junctions. That way they don't have to stop at every single intersection. We're gonna place more industrial out here and then use some commercial as a buffer. We don't have commercial zone demand yet, but it'll come. And of course, we need the water pipes under the road again, where they belong. And let's take a moment to let this run at full speed. While we do that, let's look at our info views. These are powerful statistics that you can look at in order to see everything that's going on with your city. The ones we have access to right now are power. It'll show your consumption and production. Water, which will do the same for water and sewage and happiness, which will show how happy each person is in the city. Right now, our residents aren't very happy. The next one is traffic. It'll show your average traffic flow. As the roads get busier, it'll become red here. Right now, we've got pretty good traffic, but I expect that to change. We still have quite a bit of industrial demand, so I'm gonna add an extra little square here, and that should take care of it. Oh, hey, look at that. We're finally profitable. So now we'll just keep playing and responding to the demand as the city grows in order to reach the next milestone where we'll unlock even more buildings to play with. Milestones are approached at various population targets. So once you hit that, you'll unlock a whole number of new options. But for now, we're just gonna keep expanding this grid. Not everybody's a fan of grids, but they are simple and they're easy to show for demonstration purposes. And you can do a lot with them. Eventually we'll change things up as the city expands, but when you're first getting started, a grid works well to keep everything organized and simple. And look at that. We just hit Little Hamlet. Yay! So we've unlocked a lot of new features here. Taxes. So taxes will allow you to raise money from your citizens. You can adjust the rate as you want. Loans. If you do go broke, you can always take out a loan. But we're going to talk about the new services that we're getting here, which is garbage, healthcare, and education. Before we do that, though, let's go into our taxes. The highest tax rate you can do where people are still happy and won't move out is 12%. So let's be sure to max this out so we can make as much money as possible. Next, we need to do garbage. Garbage is crucial, so let's pause this. If your city does not have adequate garbage coverage, your city will die, I promise you. So we have two options here. I'm gonna start with landfill, which comes with the base game. Recycling centers came in a later DLC, so we'll get into that in another episode. So the simplest way to put a landfill is to look at the roads that turn green, and that shows roughly the coverage of the garbage trucks. I'm gonna keep it over here along with the industry so that the pollution doesn't bother the citizens. The next most important service is gonna be healthcare. When you start, you'll just have access to this one medical clinic, I recommend putting it near a main road, but not on a main road, as the ambulances loading onto the main road will cause a lot of traffic. So let's start by putting it over here. After that, we have schools. So we start with just an elementary school. It costs $10,000, so we're gonna lose a little bit of money doing this, but it'll help to educate the citizens and allow your buildings to level up. I suggest putting it somewhat near your residential zones as it increases the happiness and land value quite a bit. So now that we've got some basic services covered, we're gonna let the game run for a while so we can make some more money. And I'm gonna expand the residential area back here a little bit. I'm not gonna go all the way to the water tower because it creates noise pollution, which causes a lot of unhappiness and poor health. I don't know why noise pollution causes poor health, but that's the game mechanic. So now I'm just responding to the demand, which is a ton of residential. There's a little bit of commercial, so I'm gonna put it here to act as a buffer between the industrial. So we're starting to make quite a lot of money, which is really good for the city, but I think we can pump it up a notch. Let's take a look at our budget. So we can look at the power budget, water budget, garbage, health, and schools. What I wanna do is go into our info menus and look at how much power we're using. As you can see, we're only using 16 megawatts. We can afford to lower this and save a little bit of maintenance costs. And we can do the same with water as well. Garbage, not doing so good. I would recommend not messing with your garbage but schools. So we have an eligible of 152 students, but a capacity of 300. While that's great, I think we can afford to cut the education budget just a little bit, maybe down to 80% for now. And as you can see, we're a lot more profitable. Now let's say 
We don't want a boring grid that goes on forever. You want to play around with some unique shapes. Well, we have tools to do that. What we're going to do is expand this out about two more on each side, and I want this to curve towards the beach. Because we have the money now, we can afford to make a big investment in the city's infrastructure. So we have two different options for curved roads. We can do freeform road or curved road. So curved road can create a relatively perfect curve along whatever axis you draw it in. Whereas freeform lets you play around with it a little more, allowing the angles to go kind of wherever you want. I'm gonna start with curved road. We're gonna take this one and curve it out towards the beach. And we're gonna do the same with this one using our road guidelines to make sure that it's relatively flush. Now it's not perfect, but cities are never quite perfect. I'll just connect this up so that there's at least some sort of connectivity here. Diana from the future here. I forgot to change the direction of the one-way road when I first placed it. So just hit the upgrade button here and right click to switch it so the two roads go in opposite directions. So now let's expand this out a little more and play around with some larger blocks. And look at that, we hit Worthy Village. So now we can unlock a new area, which we're not quite ready to do yet. We've still got a lot of land, but you can also do all of this stuff here like districts and policies, but we'll get into that later. What I wanna talk about is emergency services and police department. So your citizens are going to need police and fire real soon. Again, just like the garbage, you can kind of tell where the coverage of the fire departments are gonna be. And you'll probably need a couple, ideally close to the main road. Now we're broke, so let's zone some more residential and really make some money. And as you can see, we're a little light on water. That's okay. We can throw in another water tower over here. And now we really have no money. But again, we can make more. That's not a problem. Now here comes the fun part. We're gonna curve everything a little bit. I like to use this freeform road tool and then line it up with a guideline and then go straight like that. Typically when building roads to mirror a curve, I try to get everything along the same guideline. That gives everything a nice coherent pattern and sort of transitions the grid into something more organic. Again, I like to keep some space here and there between the junctions on this main couplet just so traffic can move a little faster. Then along the main road here, we're gonna have lots of commercial. Now we should have enough money for at least one police department. As you can see, we've got a lot of crime and that's not good. So let's throw that right in there. Now the police cars can patrol the area with ease. We don't have enough money for another one yet, but we can wait and zone more residential to make even more money. You have a couple of options for zoning here. I've been using this one. You can also do fill, which will fill up these squares with the type of zone you selected, or you can do paint, and this will paint them in. You have two brush sizes here, so you have the small one and the large one. And look at that, we hit Tiny Town. We have a bunch of new policies and roads that we can play with, as well as all this new DLC stuff that we'll get into in another episode. So at this point, I think the city has grown large enough that we can invest in our road infrastructure a bit. Sometimes the game doesn't like stuff like this. I'm gonna leave this one for now. So I would say this road here has a potential to be another main street for the city. And it's quite small and we have some options for four lane roads, which will enable a higher capacity of traffic. Now we could use these big ones, but we would kill all of this zoning here. And we don't wanna do that. Luckily there was a new free update to the base game recently where you can get a small four lane road. I love these roads and they're great for bringing in lots of traffic and acting as a main road without taking up so much space. Let's add a few more blocks over here. We're gonna play around with some larger grid sizes now as we get a little further out from the main core. Of course, we don't have enough god money. That's on me, I messed up y'all. Let's say we wanna take out a loan. You can take out two different sizes of loans. You'll pay a little interest and it'll cost you a little bit per week. I'm actually liking the $60,000 loan a little more. We'll get more money up front. It may take longer to pay off, but the weekly cost is so much less. Now with this fresh influx of cash, we can invest in the infrastructure that our city needs. Another fun thing that we've unlocked is parks. There are many different sizes and shapes of parks, and we're gonna put a few throughout the city. I'd say here's a great place for the park with trees. And in the center here, we have a nice little small park. I think that's great as a gathering place for everyone in the center of town while they're shopping. Now we finally have enough money to complete our police coverage. I'm gonna put it here with the fire department so that we have a nice little public service campus going on. Another very important service we've unlocked is high schools. 
This will help educate your population even more, allowing them to take on even higher paying jobs, bringing in more tax revenue. Also, we have libraries. A library is a great place for adult Sims to become more educated. It also works well as sort of the centerpiece of a residential neighborhood. I'm thinking right here next to the park would be perfect for it. And once again, we've used all of our money. I want to talk a little bit about detailing really quick. We have access to a number of paths here, and you can connect them up to the park. Let's integrate this library into this main park with some paths and some detailing of trees. So you have a number of different options for trees to choose from. My favorite being these content creator trees. They look much more realistic than a lot of the other base game trees. Because it's a beach location, we're going to play with these California palms. These wild hedges are great to line paths with. They look really cute. I think a few trees and bushes just make this place feel a little more alive. It's a great way to fill out your empty space in the city and give everything a sense of place and purpose. As you can see, we've got some power problems. Luckily, we have enough money for a second power plant. One issue is that the pollution extends into this residential zone a little bit. So what we're going to do is build another road out here and create a little utilities campus of sorts. But our garbage processing status isn't great, so we're going to add a second landfill in here to create some more trucks. And that resolved the issue. We're still coming along nicely and making money while we're at it. If this is your first time watching my content, I normally do a lot of highly modded, heavily detailed cities. Check out my other series, Salt Hair. It's based on Salt Lake City, and I think you'll learn a lot, even if it's a bit more advanced. And also, don't forget to subscribe to watch me build out the rest of Sandy Beach.